Hello, hello, I'm Breton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. And welcome back to our MCAT Bytes. Today, we're heating things up with thermodynamics, the study of energy and its transformation. Understanding the laws of thermodynamics is essential for cracking some of the hardest questions on the MCAT's chemphys section, and unfortunately, near future in medicine, as these principles govern biological systems like the physical world alike. Let's unravel these four laws one by one. And you think we'd start with law one, but no, we start with the zeroth law of thermodynamics, which might sound less important, but it is absolutely fundamental to understanding everything. It defines temperature. The zeroth law states that if two systems are equal in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. I like to think of this as if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. It's the transitive property, but worded much longer than just saying it's the transitive property. Why is this important? Well, it allows us to measure temperature and use it as a marker of thermal energy. It's a scientific basis for thermometers and the idea that it flows from hot to cold to achieve equilibrium. And weirdly enough, this is a question that the MCAT loves asking. It'll literally ask you, hey, what does a thermometer represent with regards to the thermodynamic laws. And you need to know it's the zeroth law. Why is that important for being a doctor? I'm not sure, but you need to know it for the MCAT. So make sure that that is on your Anki cards. Now let's move on to the first law of thermodynamics now that the zero is taken out of the way, which hopefully we're feeling good so far. The first law is also something I'm sure you've heard before. It's getting at the law of conservation of energy. In any system, the total internal energy change, delta E, is the sum of that heat, little q, added to the system, and the work done on it. Therefore, we can say that delta E equals q plus w. If heat is absorbed by the system, then q will be positive. If the system cools, then q is negative. Similarly, w is positive when work is done on the system and negative when work is done by the system. This law is a reminder that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed or transferred, a concept that underpins everything from cellular metabolism to medical imaging technologies. MCAT-wise, what you're going to want to know is literally memorize when Q is, Q is positive or when Q is negative, what that means with heat entering or leaving the system. Once you've got that figured out, things are going to start making a lot more sense when it comes to thermodynamics. We're already halfway there, guys. Keep with it as we move on to this second law of thermodynamics. The second law is going to introduce something a bit more confusing than the first two. Entropy. Not energy, entropy. Entropy is a measure of disorder. It tells us that the total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease over time, meaning systems naturally progress towards a state of maximum entropy. Practical terms, it explains why the energy spreads out spontaneously, such as why heat dissipates from a warm object until it cools down. In a biological system, this law is vital for understanding why certain processes require energy input to maintain order and combat the natural tendency towards disorder. It's why our bodies need a constant supply of energy from food to sustain life. This is because the heat from our bodies are radiating out to the air around us. Now, before we get to the last law of thermodynamics, let's take a little interlude with an example problem to make sure that everything's making sense. Imagine an ice cube, or don't imagine it and look on your screen. Now put that ice cube in a glass of water. It's melting now. Is this process spontaneous? And what does it say about the entropy change in the system? Pause for a little. Well, yes, it's spontaneous, assuming it's at room temperature, because it's occurring without external energy, indicating an increase in entropy as the ice transitions to a more disordered liquid state. Now let's move on to the third law of thermodynamics. While that may be the last law, it is not the least. This law states that the entropy of a perfect crystal at absolute zero is exactly zero. At this point, a system possesses minimal energy and no thermal motion. Why does this matter? Well, it sets a fundamental limit on how cold things can get and is a key concept in cryogenics and low temperature physics. In medicine, this aids in the development of techniques like cryopreservation, which is crucial for organ transplants and biological research. But for the MCAT, what do you need to know? You just need to know that the third law of thermodynamics tells us what absolute zero is. Forget all of this crystal nonsense. Absolute zero equals the third law of thermodynamics. One more entropy question for you. Picture a frozen sample in a cryogenic storage. As it approaches absolute zero, what happens to its entropy? Take a few moments to think about this one. The entropy decreases. 
reaching its minimum at absolute zero. This will align it with the third law of thermodynamics. And there you have it, the four cardinal laws of thermodynamics, each playing a crucial role in our understanding of the physical and biological world. Keep these principles in mind as you continue your MCAT prep and beyond into your medical careers. Thank you so much for watching our video on the laws of thermodynamics, and I will see you next time.